Hello, I'm Crudeless, and I'll be your guide for this boss fight against the final boss of the Ashes of Ariandel DLC for Dark Souls 3. This video is split in two. The first part will be a guide on the different phases of the boss, which moves the boss will do and how to deal with those. And the last part will be my full playthrough of the boss fight, so you can see how I dealt with the boss. The boss fight itself is split into three different phases. And throughout these phases, the boss difficulty will increase. In the first phase, we fight Sister Freed alone. In the second phase, we meet uh, Sister Freed and Ariandel together. And the final phase is against Black Flame Freed, a more powerful version of the first phase. Let's start with the different moves the boss will do against us. In the first phase, she will start off by doing a, a stance change, which is very important that you know of. As you can see, she moves her scythe down towards her back of her back, and she will do a grab attack while she does that. Alternatively, she can also do a quick, like, circle slice uh, that you want to avoid. Uh, so if she does this stance change, I recommend that you just move away from her and uh, try to stay away for as long as you can until she goes back into her regular stance. Next off, we have the invisibility phase, which involves her going invisible and moving around the room uh, while being invisible. Um, during this phase, she will charge up a move and you want to interrupt this move. So be careful and try to orient yourself in the room. Try to find out where she jumped to. She will jump uh, right over your head and you can use your environment here to locate her. And if you don't, you'll be grabbed by her scythe. So you might want to watch out for the, the different tables in the room, see what is shattered by her, and uh, if you interrupt her moves, she will be very vulnerable to taking damage. So that's your prime time to strike, and you have quite a bit of time to interrupt her as well. So you can just wait out a bit, uh, as you can see here I'm showing you just how long it takes. Next off, she will do some regular attacks. These are parryable, and you can also block them. I'm not sure if you can block them, but you can at least dodge backwards to avoid them pretty easily. Sometimes she will also do a jump attack, which is quite dangerous. She will do this when you're, she is in the, the stance change, so be careful about that. It will also leave a like a huge area of ice uh, that will make you frostbitten, and also it will deal uh, damage to you and explode after a short while, as you can see here. So be careful and avoid those areas. Uh, the, all the attacks, as I said, were parryable, um, so you can parry those and deal a lot of damage to her. Sometimes the parry window is a bit small, so you will take a lot of damage if you try to parry her, so it might be advisable to just dodge instead of parrying in this fight. Now we go into the second phase after you've dealt with her, and she will spawn uh, together with Ariandel. You want to make sure you avoid both of their attacks and try to keep note of where both of them are in the room. So first of all, we have uh, the new abilities that uh, that Frida will do. She will do a Path of Ice, uh, which will do basically the same as she does in the first phase, but she will leave it um, like uh, going forward from her position. Uh, she will basically signify this by moving her scythe up against her back once more, like the, st the stance change that she did in the first phase. Um, she also will make a AOE area of ice in front of her, like a big cone of ice. Uh, you want to dodge away from those as well, because they will explode and they will make you frostbitten. Quick note about the frostbite, by the way, you want to bring a torch. In this case, if you get frostbitten, like here, you can pull out the torch and it will be uh, removed faster. Now, in addition to uh, Frida's moves, we have Ariandel here, who will do a Cinder Smash, uh, running around with this huge soul vessel looking thing, trying to smash it crazily in front of him. You want to dodge to his side. If he does, never stay in front of uh, Ariandel, he will smash you to bits. This is also a prime opportunity to attack him. I would recommend that you do attack him. Uh, he will also do a quite a big smash sometimes um, wait, while standing still. And it's very difficult to keep track of, uh, of Frida while you're fighting against Ariandel. You also do it like a side sweep if you are in front of him, so be careful about that. Also, Ariandel will eventually do this massive strike towards the ground, leaving behind a pool of lava. And this might one-shot you if you're unlucky, uh, so you want to stay away from that as far as possible. If that wasn't enough, uh, Ariandel does also have a fire breath attack. Now, this is quite easy to dodge, just run towards either side of the fire breath. I would recommend to run into the right, depending on where Frida is positioned, but this is an ample opportunity for you to get some strikes in and deal some damage to uh, Ariandel. They both share the same health pool, 
So I recommend actually fighting and striking Ariandel in this fight because he's easier to hit. However, Frida is easier to stagger. Now, after some time, Freed will teleport away and become invisible. And at that time, she will try to heal the boss. You will see this glowing uh, yellow light uh, somewhere in the uh, in the area. And you want to locate this light, run towards it and try to hit her to interrupt the spell casting. Um, this will make the fight easier if you are able to do so. And you can also deal damage to Frida while she is casting. Uh, she's staggered and you can deal a lot of damage to the boss this way. Now, if you continually deal damage to Ariandel, you'll be able to stagger him, and you can deal some massive amounts of damage to him if you press R1 in front of his face. And once you're done with that, you will go into the third and the hardest part of the fight. Immediately after going into the third phase, you want to back off from Freed. She will do a AoE like splash attack immediately, and she'll also do a what I call a shadow AoE cone. Uh, this will release a huge Shadow Flame AoE beneath her, and also a cone that goes straight forward in front of her. So you want to dodge backwards and to the sides when she does that one. Next, she has an Ice Jump Slash. Uh, this is, she will indicate this by doing the Spin Attack and going up. She will use a uh, like dual wielding her weapons. Uh, she'll leave behind a patch of ice, very similar to the ones she uses in the second phase. And this will leave behind an explosion, so you want to roll away from that one to avoid getting frostbitten. She also has regular ice moves like these, where she leaves behind uh, patches of, of ice in front of her, similar to the ones she does in the second phase, um, and she'll combine these in different ways to make the fight hard for you. Uh, sometimes she'll also just throw these patches in front of her, and she'll follow them up with a shadow strike, uh, or the shadow explosion that she dealt at the first time. And she'll also make herself invisible, and jump around at different places in the room, so be careful and try to find her. And she'll leave behind the patches of ice trying to make you um, uh, frostbitten. These will not explode afterwards, but they will make you frostbitten quite quickly. Uh, she also has a grab attack. She'll charge towards you, grab you with her scythes and slash your head off, which deals a ton of damage. Might one-shot you if you don't have a lot of uh, vigor, so be careful about that. She also has a couple of shadow moves, uh, dodge backwards from, from those when she does them. Uh, sometimes she do a grab, a small like jab with her scythe and uh, take it towards her and she'll slash you with those. Um, she also has a frontal cone ability that will deal shadow flame damage. This is probably the most important part about the fight, the deadly ice combo. As you can see here I died from this ability. Uh, she will jump around and uh, first strike a couple of times with her, her regular strikes and she'll follow this up with a, another delayed strike so it makes dodging a bit difficult and uh, then she will make a final jump towards you and slash you into the ground uh, so you have some time to get up back up before she continues dealing damage to you. Now, to avoid those, I recommend dodging towards uh, your right um, in front of her. Uh, sometimes you're lucky you can dodge underneath your abilities. And also, I recommend that you try to strike her with your, your weapon uh, or your spells, uh, depending on what you use, uh, because she will stagger during the combo. And this is like the best way to, to stop her from continuing to deal damage to you. So don't forget to be offensive. Now I'm going to commentate through my playthrough of the boss fight and go through my mindset while I was fighting the boss. So first of all, running in here with my buckler and my dark sword, uh, running towards her prompts her attack, a regular attack. Uh, it's very easy to parry that one. I also charge up my R1 attack to deal some damage to her after the parry, uh, while she basically gets up from the ground once more. I keep doing this, as you can see she's already down to 50%. You want to make sure you don't spend too many Estus Flasks in this phase, because you want to save those to the last one, because trust me, you will need them. Now, when she goes invisible, yeah, I just thought, okay, she's going to go this way, because I used my headset to locate her with sound, and... Uh, use my time to finish off the first phase. Next off, I want to make sure I don't run towards Freed uh, immediately because I know that Ariandel will come towards us, but you want to close in before uh, he will do the charge uh, because you want to get that parry in immediately, uh, or at, at least a couple of strikes against her. Now the hard part about this fight, or this phase, is that you want to avoid, uh, you want to keep track of both of them at the same time. You also want to avoid their attacks, uh, and also deal damage to the boss. Pretty obvious, I know, but it's quite difficult in, in practice. 
Um, so I would usually recommend that you would go and hit Ariandel because you can stagger him to deal massive amounts of damage. And, uh, and Freed is a bit more difficult to hit as she will dodge away from you, very similar to the movement in Bloodborne. Um, so the fight is like a combination of, uh, of Lady Maria and uh, I would say maybe um, the Cleric Beast in that regard. As you can see here now, she decides to heal up, I run towards her, make a jump attack to deal some additional damage and strike her a bit more. Now a thing I want to stress here in this fight is that you want to make sure that you don't stress yourself. Uh, take your time if you're if you're uh, not sure about where the different characters are, where the bosses are. Uh, just run away from them, get some perspective on the fight and eventually you'll be able to close in on Ariandel, deal some damage and strike them down. Now um, during this phase I want to save up on my Estus flasks, so I decided to use an Ember to get myself some additional health and to heal myself up. I also decided to use like a dark uh, resistance pellet. This isn't necessary because uh, the most of the damage coming from the boss isn't dark damage, it's physical damage I believe and also some frost damage. Uh, so um, it's not necessary. She will come back in her form as I said in the the start of the video she will do this AoE attack and the frontal cone so you want to make sure you are quite a bit away from her and then you run uh, roll to the side and and um, I guess backwards and then to the side and uh, to avoid the attack uh, so the fight starts off she will do the massive jump attack there and I was a bit unlucky there you can see it I was uh, just on top of the ice patch and um, so it's I would recommend that you actually just dodge away from it instead of uh, trying to hit her there. You can see I'm trying to be a bit offensive here and I'm trying to deal damage to her so she won't be able to combo too much. Um, this is like uh, something I tried out a couple of different times. Um, sometimes I was lucky and fortunate with the, uh, the interrupts, but uh, most of the time um, they went quite badly. She just jumps away after I hit her. You're able to hit her like two times or something like that and then she jumps away. Uh, so you gotta just chip at her sometimes. The most ample uh, time to hit her is actually after the Shadow Flame combo, um, which was the attack she used right after he, she entered the first, uh, or this is the third phase here. So the regular attacks here are actually quite easy to dodge. Um, the hardest part about this fight is the the ice combo that she does, at least in my opinion, um, because. As you can see here, she is very aggressive, uh, she will continuously move towards you, and you can see there, I managed to dodge the last part of the attack um, by, by a shred of hair. Um, this is also very difficult to dodge, uh, the grab attack, she will indicate it by, by making her scythe glow, um, but you can try to dodge towards her, her sides, like uh, in front of you and to the left, or in front of you to the right, and you might be able to dodge uh, those. As you can see, the most ample part about interrupting the, the deadly ice combo here is to try to get your strike in before she does the delayed attack. Uh, the delayed attack, by the way, is the one where she kind of moves her scythe backwards and then strikes after some time. So you can't really continuously dodge it. You have to stop and then dodge it. As you can see, I'm messing up the dodges a bit here. And that's it. That's the final boss of the Ashes of Ariandel DLC for Dark Souls 3. I hope this guide was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a comment down below and liking the video as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I have a playthrough of Dark Souls 3 in the description down below. I also have full complete playthroughs of Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2 on the channel as well. I have been Crudeless. Good luck and farewell.